the fractal design Celsius Plus S24 Prisma is part of the brand new all-in-one liquid CPU coolers from Fractal Design. The first series of coolers were known to be one of the best coolers on the market using the Assetec designs and in this review we have the S24 Prisma model from the new series. The S24 name comes from the usage of a standard 240mm radiator while the Prisma name is a reference to the two fans and the integrated addressable RGB LED system. The cooler uses two 120mm fans that are part of the Fractal Design Prisma series of fans. These two fans are the model Prisma A112 PWM and have a minimum rotational speed of 500 RPM and a maximum speed of 2000 RPM. Fortunately, both fans can be controlled through PWM. And yes, they have addressable RGB. A rather nice implementation of it actually, with the standard white impellers and a white plastic ring placed on the edges of the fan to enhance the color and light diffusion. The radiator used looks like any other radiator, but it isn't. It has a thickness of 32mm, a width of 122mm and a length of 284mm. The interesting feature present on this radiator is the integrated fan and RGB hub installed in between the two tubes. This hub offers a total of 4 fan headers and 2 addressable RGB headers. This small fan-RGB hub not only provides you with an easy solution to powering everything from the fans to their RGBs, but its location means that the clutter of cables will be severely reduced, especially since both the fans and the water block have RGB elements implemented. The tubes have a length of 400mm and are covered in a rather nice sleeving which not only protects the surface of the tubing but also holds in place some cables that are routed under it. This method of hiding and organizing cables is starting to become a regular sight among the higher priced liquid CPU coolers and let me tell you, this is great, especially hiding the extra cables required for powering and sending the signal for LEDs across both the CPU block and the fans. The water block is using a minimalistic design with a reflective plastic top and a matte finish on its body. It has a height of just 45mm and a diameter of 62mm. The fittings making the connection with the tubes are unfortunately made out of plastic, but are right angled and can swivel right and right. There is only a single cable present on this whole CPU cooler and that is connected to the water block. This means that the water block itself acts as a pass-through for both the power and the PWM signal for that small hub installed on the radiator and thus you can power the entire cooler which means pump, LEDs and fans with just one cable connected to your motherboard. The pump itself has a speed range between 800 RPM and 2800 RPM, with an additional setting for 3500 RPM that is powered on during thermal protection mode. This speed can be controlled by rotating the plastic ring on the upper edge of the CPU block. These two settings are labeled as PWM for the high RPM and Auto for the lower RPM. And if you are wondering if there is some noise difference between selecting these modes, yes. Yes, it is a difference. And here is how the pump sounds like with the two modes being cycled through and activated. Now that you've heard how the pump sounds like in both operating modes, don't worry, you will also get to see if there is a temperature difference between the two RPM modes. Spoiler alert, there is a difference. Moving along, the base plate of the cooler is made from copper and has a linear brush texture on its surface. The cold plate is attached to the pump assembly with 8 torque screws, again, a design that has been used before with pretty much everything that is related to Assetec as an internal design. Before we get into the installation of the cooler inside the system, here is what is being delivered with the Celsius Plus S24 Prisma. We have a user manual, a plastic backplate, a metallic ring for the AMD platform, while the Intel ring already is installed on the CPU block from the factory. Then there are 4 metallic thumb screws that hold the block over the CPU and finally there are 8 long screws for the fans with an additional 8 short screws for installing the radiator to the case. There are also 2 sets of standoffs for the different platforms and a short cable that passes on the RGB signal from the motherboard to the water box LEDs. There is also an additional AMD metallic bracket and two plastic self-adhesive clamps for wire management around the radiator. Installing this cooler is very easy as it is the same basic Assetec mounting system found on many liquid coolers dating back to the original NZXT Kraken series. However, there is one complaint that I had back then with those coolers and it is still the same thing with this cooler. The backplate is made out of plastic 
and it is not even that thick, it's flimsy and feels like it will break any second. Anyway, first you move the screw inserts on the motherboard so that they will line up with your CPU socket, then place the backplate at the back of the motherboard, also select the right double threaded mounting standoff and screw that into the inserts of the backplate on the front side of the CPU socket. Afterwards you just place the CPU block over the CPU socket and use the included beefy metallic thumb screws to secure the whole thing in place. Also don't forget to connect the fans and the pump to the proper power locations. I use a dedicated power cable for the pump which is connected directly to power supply, while the fans go either into the motherboard or in our case into that nifty fan hub you have on the radiator. And this is how the cooler looks like once installed. The first thing you'll notice is how long the tubes are and that they are almost making contact with the graphics cards. This is not an issue in our case, the only issue would be if the tubes are so long that they apply pressure on the graphics card, but this cooler has none of those. Also before getting into the testing of the cooler we have to see or rather hear how this unit sounds like. Here is a noise sample of the two fans spinning at their maximum rated speeds while installed on the radiator and inside the chassis. This is done to showcase the actual sound signature of the cooler at maximum speed because the regular decibel reading, while being useful, does not take into consideration bearing noises or wind turbulences that might occur. The Fractal Design Celsius Plus S24 Prisma reached a maximum noise output of 45 decibels, measured at a distance of 10 cm away from the system and CPU cooler, a value that is not really that surprising as you have two 120mm fans placed over a radiator, pushing air at a speed of around 2000 rpm. This cooler is in fact in close proximity in terms of noise to the previous Celsius liquid cooler or other coolers using the same configuration as in pretty much the same radiator and fan number. The testing procedure is pretty simple for all CPU coolers. The used CPU is the Intel i9-9900K running both at the factory settings and also manually overclocked to 5GHz on all cores. For all testing the ambient temperature is fixed at 26 degrees Celsius as it simulates a summer day inside. The tests themselves are two in number and we start with the first one which is Intel Burn Test V2, a benchmark that applies a load on the CPU which is similar with what you can encounter in a modern AAA video game. And in this test the Celsius Plus S24 Prisma reached a maximum temperature of 57 degrees Celsius with the CPU overclocked and 52 degrees Celsius with the CPU running at its factory frequency. However, the real test comes next, which involves the AIDA64 FPU system stability test. This places an unusual high load on the CPU, a type of load that is not really encountered in your daily usage regardless of video games or video processing software. But it is a good way to push each CPU cooler to its limit and see how they perform. And in this test, the cooler reached a temperature of 82 degrees Celsius with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz and 59 degrees Celsius with the CPU running at its factory frequency. However, there is more. As I've said early on, we will see if the two speed modes for the pump affect the cooling performance and so far you've only seen the performance of this cooler with the pump running in PWM mode or in other words with the higher speed selected. When the auto mode is used, the temperature rises by approximately 6 degrees Celsius, quite a high price to pay for a silent pump. While the cooler running in PWM mode reached a maximum temperature of 82 degrees Celsius, in auto mode it reached 88 degrees Celsius, which puts this cooler pretty close to the Noctua NH-U12S or the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. The temperature difference between PWM and Auto Mode is certainly something you need to consider when buying this CPU cooler. If you were to ask me, I just use this cooler running in PWM mode and controlling the fans through the motherboard. In my opinion, the sound of the pump circulating the liquid is not high enough to justify a nearly 6 degrees in terms of performance loss. All this being said, is the Fractal Design Celsius Plus S24 Prisma worth the price? Well, it depends. On one side, with an average price tag of 160 US dollars or euros, this cooler is not cheap. However, the build quality is as good as it gets. Everything is solid and well put together. The sleeving on the tubing is flawless and the cables are flexible yet not flimsy. The two Prisma fans are also good, making good airflow and static pressure while also satisfying the RGB needs of everyone. The performance in PWM mode is good and will match most high-end CPU coolers on the market both air or liquid, while the sound at maximum speed is, let's just say, adequate. I say this because most people will not use the fans at their maximum speed unless overclocking. 
What I don't like is that a few changes have been made from the previous Celsius coolers, the main one being the lack of removable fittings which made the older coolers very easy to service. Also metal fittings were better overall in terms of quality. In addition, the backplate, while it is the same one for most Acetec based coolers, it can be better as it have more material on it and provide better support at the back of the motherboard. If you liked this review, then you can perhaps consider subscribing for more. And also, if you want to support the channel directly, then in the description below, the Patreon and Subscriber Star pages of the channel are linked.